What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodeBee.com and in this video, we're gonna look at arrays in Go. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at arrays with Go. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeBee.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership with all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. And a special shout out to everyone over the weekend who bought my new Intro to Python programming book. I appreciate everybody that bought a copy. Thank you, and I hope you like it. All right, so arrays in Go. Now, if you're coming from a Python or something like that, Arrays are obviously called lists. So every time I say array, if you're coming from Python, just think list, same exact thing, but Go treats them a lot differently. They treat them almost like everything else, more C-like than Python-like. And that means you have to be very specific with them and you can't really alter the length of them as we'll see in just a minute. So to create an array with Go, it's pretty simple. We just start like a variable with our var keyword here and then just name this thing. So let's call first names like that. And then right off the bat, you have to define the length that your array is gonna be. And this is very important. So you can say three. Now you don't have to do it every time and I'll show you how in just a second, but generally speaking, you're supposed to do it this way. Define how many things are gonna be in your array. After that, you have to define the data type. So I wanna make strings, right? So then we use curly brackets and inside of here, just like with Python or any other programming language, you have your items separated by commas, right? And in the case of strings, we're gonna use quotation marks. If you use numbers, you wouldn't use quotation marks. So let's say John, April, and Wes. So these are our three things. Now, just like with every other programming language, arrays and go start at zero. So John is the zeroth item. April is the first item, and Wes is the second item. Now we have three items, but this one is the second item. You know, that's a little weird. That's just an array thing. All programming languages are like that. So, okay, we've got this. So let's print this guy to the screen. So we can go FMT, print line, like we learned in the last video, and we could just call first names. And just like with every other programming language, to call an item from an array, you just call its index number. So if we wanted to return April, she's the first, we would just type in one. So let's go ahead and save this, head back over to our terminal. I'm in my C go stuff directory, and let's go go run hello.go and boom, it prints out April, piece of cake. So that's the normal way to do it. We can also infer the length, right? So let's go var nummies, <laughs> I don't know. And instead of saying the length, we could just put a blank one there. And we wanna call int, and same deal, curly brackets, and I'm just gonna pass in some numbers here, three, four, five, whatever. And then again, if we wanna print this guy out, we could fmt dot print line, call our nummies, array, and let's say the zeroth item, save this, run this guy, and boom, it prints out one. So that's inferred length. We can also, just like with variables, we can use shorthand. So let's go shorthand. And here, let's say we create one called last names. Notice I didn't put the var in front of it because we're gonna use this little weird operator like we did with our variables. And this is shorthand. Again, we pass in two. Let's say we want string. And here I could say Elder and Smith, whatever. Same thing, we can FMT dot print line. And we want last names, the zeroth item, that would print out Elder, right? So, okay. We can also do shorthand with inferred lengths. So let's say shorthand with inferred. How do you spell inferred? Okay. <laughs> so let's say our names, I don't know. And same deal, we just put blank there, and this is gonna be a string. And then let's say we want elder and a brown. Again, we can fmt.println this guy, and we could just print out the entire thing if we want. Save this, head back over here, run it, and boom, here we see elder and brown. Okay, so we can also change item in array. So you can't remove an item or add an item, but you can change an item. So if we have our names array, and say we wanna change the first item, which is brown, remember, because it starts at zero. So elder is zero, brown is one. We wanna change brown. So one, we can just make a change. So we could just say Smith or something like that. So we're printing it out here. Let's print it out again after we've made a change. Save this, head back over here, run this guy again. 
You can see first it was Elder and Brown, now it's Elder and Smith. So you can change things, you just can't add or remove things because we've defined or at least inferred the length already and you can't change that. You can change it by using something called slices and we'll talk about that in just a minute. So, okay, that's if you're very specific, but say we've got an array and we know there's gonna be 10 things in there eventually, but right now we've only got two things to put in there. How can we do that? Well, we can use default assignment, right? So to do that, let's call var and then let's go our nummies, <laughs> right? And then let's say we've got uh, an array that we want it to be five, but right now, this is gonna be an integer. Right now, all we've got is two things, so one and two, right? So if we now fmt.print this guy, and we want to print out our nummies, you'll see that go will assign sort of the default thing for the unclaimed positions. So in our instance here, we're using integers. So the default integer is zero, right? In strings, the default for string is just nothing, right? For Boolean, I think the default Boolean is false. And we looked at that a couple of videos ago, but whatever the default is, that's what it is. So if we save this and run it, head back over here, you'll see one and two are there. And then the rest of the other three spaces, because we have five total, they're just assigned zero. So that's kind of cool. You know, a lot of times later on, you might want to add things as your program goes along, but not right at the beginning. So that's how you do that. You can also assign things to your array in certain positions. So let's assign in certain positions. So let's go var more nummies. <laughs> I don't know what nummies are, numbers, I guess. So let's say we've got 10 of these guys, right? And they're gonna be integers. And we know we want the first thing, the zeroth item, to be the number 41. And we know we want like the fourth thing to be 99. The rest of them, Go will assign the default thing. In this case, integer, the default we know is zero. So if we save this, well, let's print this guy out. So fmt.print lines, and let's print out more nummies, right? <laughs> Uh, that cracks me up. So let's run this guy again. Then we'll see, you know, there's 10 things here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. We assign 41 to the first position. Zero, one, two, three, four is 99. The rest get assigned zero. So that's cool. So finally, the last thing I want to talk about is slices. And a slice is sort of like an array, but it's just part of an array. And this is really cool because you can add and remove things to slices, whereas you can't with arrays. So a lot of times, instead of using an array, you might just wanna use a slice, right? So let's create a slice here real quick and let's see. So let's go var and I'm gonna create something called toppings and this is gonna be pizza toppings. And so let's create say five of them and this is gonna be a string and we want pepperoni, we want onion, I don't know, what do the kids like on the pizzas these days? Let's say cheese and supreme, supreme pizza, and what else? Bacon, everybody loves bacon, right? So if we fmt.println toppings, we'll see all five of these things listed, right? Okay, so let's say we want to create a slice of just the first two things, right? So let's go ahead and create a topping slice. And I'm just gonna use our shorthand and then we want a slice of our toppings array because you know that's what we call this. And we just want the first two items. So that's from zero up till two. So zero, one, and then stop at two. So that'll just bring these two things. So here we can fmt.println. And let's print out our topping slice. So here we're printing out the entire thing. Here we're just printing out a slice. Go ahead and save this, head back over here, run this guy. And boom, we see here's the entire thing. Here's just the slice of two things. Okay, that's cool, but why do we really care? Well, there are times when you just need to pull out a slice of an array, but also, like I said, you can add things and remove things from a slice, whereas you can't do that with a regular array. So we can see this. First thing, let's say modify a slice, and that's the same thing like modifying an array. So let's go topping slice. So let's say we wanna change the oneth item, which is onion. We can just change this to I don't know, like peppers, something like that. Now, if we fmt.print line our topping slice, we should see instead of this being onion, it'll be peppers, right? So let's save this, run it just to make sure. 
and we see it was onion, now it's peppers. Okay, that's how you modify, but how do you add things? So let's add item to slice. So we would call topping slice, and then set that equal to the append function. And then what do we want to append? Well, we want to append our topping slice, slice, and we want to add in something else. Let's say apple. Does apple go on pizza? I don't think so, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. So now let's go fmt dot print line, and we want our topping slice. Okay, this up. Save this. Head back over here. Let's clear this screen. Run this guy again. And here you see we've added apple, and that's very cool. So you can also add two slices together. So let's call other slice, and say we want to let's use our shorthand, and we want to pull out the toppings. I don't know, let's say we went zero through two. So let's go zero, one, two, three, three through four, I guess. That'd just be supreme, right? So three comma four. If we FMT dot print line with our other slice, we should just see supreme, I guess, right? Oh, misspelled toppings, misspelled toppings. Uh, there we go, boom. Save this, head back over here, clear the screen, run the sky again. Okay, so that's just returning Supreme. So we have two slices, one with pepperoni, peppers, apple, and one with Supreme. So let's say now we want to merge these two together. We can just use either one of them or we can create a new one. I'm just going to use this guy. So let's say other slice, and that's going to equal append. And same deal, we just want to say let's append other slice and topping slice. Now here's the weird thing. You have to put a dot, dot, dot at the end of this. That's just how slices work. I don't know why. <laughs> so, FM, so let's go FMT dot print line and let's print out our other slice again to make sure these merge together. So this should be this guy and this guy. So let's run this guy and see. And here we had pepperoni, peppers, and apple. Pepperoni, peppers, and apple. And we had supreme. We have supreme. Boom, we've merged these all together into one slice. So those are arrays, those are slices in a nutshell, and I'll post the code below in the comment section if you wanna see this code, as I always do. But uh, a little bit more complicated than something like a Python, but being very specific like this allows the code to execute faster when it's compiled and does all kinds of other things that are good. I miss the ease of Python when I'm doing something like this, I'm sure you do too, but the speed benefits may outweigh the ease of writing the code. But whatever, that's arrays, that's slices, and that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.